In this video, we are going to see how to analyze this data using one specific feature of pivot table. This is raw data. We have few columns and lots of rows. It's transactional data and I want to analyze it. This is already a table. So we'll go to insert pivot table from table and range. It'll add a new sheet and give me a blank report. As I have said earlier, drag this from the header and put it on this side so that whatever activity we do in the pivot table fields area, it reflects directly here. So we'll make a simple pivot table, amount and date. Now if you do this, what happens? It shows me something like this. We don't want that. We want individual date to be shown. So right click and say ungroup. For this grouping to work, the entire column must have proper dates. If there is a text or some wrong format date, this is not going to work. Now, what we will do is work on one particular year. So I'm going to notice now that I have date as single column. But if I right click here and say group, it actually allows me to group in various ways. I want years no quarters and months. So now what happens? I get one more column called years, which is shown here. And although the column is still called date, it's actually months. So I'm going to keep it at months level and I'm going to put years in the filter area so that we can focus on one of the years and look at what happened across months in year 2020. So this is good. Now this is where we want to look at these numbers, not as they are. We can already see these are individual monthly numbers and this is the total. But we want to go one step further. So remember, this is a localized problem. We want to look at the data in a different way. So you right click. There are two things you should look at. Summarize values by, which already it has done some. In case you wanted count or average, we could have done that as well. But for now, sum is good enough. But the other and more powerful part is this. Show values as. This does give you a very long list and that's exactly what we are going to see now. Now, because we are showing values as something, these values are not going to be visible as they are. So we may get confused. So here is the deal. In the value area, the same field can be added more than once. So I'm going to keep the first column constant that gives us the actual sum. And in the second column, we are going to show the same value as something else. So let's try. Show values as no calculation. That's the default. Percent of grand total 26581 is the grand total. So now I say percent of grand total. Very good. So it's actually giving me the breakdown in percentage terms. Because we have only one column right now, if I go to show values as percentage of column total is going to be the same. Fine. Now, in order to have row totals, we don't have anything else. So if I say percent of row total, what is it going to do? In Jan, what is the total? That's the percentage. In Feb, what is the total? That's the percentage. But now we don't have anything in rows. So everything becomes 100. So now how does this work? Row total. So let me remove this extra amount column, which I've added. So only we have row total, but there is nothing to break it down by because we have just one value for Jan, one value for Feb and by row, 100% is what is contributing. So in order for this to work and in order to break down this 100%, what do we need to do? We need to add something in the columns. So let's add the card type. And now we can say total Jan. This is the breakdown by different types of cards. Now, in case you are getting row labels and column labels and you want to see the actual field names, you go to the design tab, report layout and choose tabular. Now, this will be easier to understand. So this is percentage of row total. Now, notice what is happening here. 
now if I say percentage of column total, each column will have different breakdown because we have multiple parameters, in this case different cards. So that's how row and column total works. So now how do you interpret these numbers? It's important to understand because everywhere you see there are percentages. So first thing you do is find where is 100 or if there is 100 in the first place. Then you look at what is the row total, column total and what is the name. So 100 is below gold. What does that mean? Under gold card expense or transactions, 12.98 comes in April and 1.26 comes in August, like that. Now, same way overall, this is the breakdown by month. Now, if we change this to row total, notice the numbers change because now this has become 100%. So now how do you interpret this number? For example, this one, what do we say? In Jan, 34% of business happened through gold card, like that. So maybe the cell remains the same, but the interpretation changes. So now I'm going to grand total. Now there'll be only one place where 100% is. So now what do we say? We are saying out of the whole business, which we are looking at right now, in Jan, whatever gold business happened is 2.84%. So that's how the same data is giving us different kinds of information. So let's come back to no calculation and see what else we can do here. So I'm going to remove the card for the time being. Now, very often we need to see month on month growth or decline. What does that mean? Jan was 2185. In Feb, it increased. So there must be some increase. I want to see how much percent increase. Same way, from Feb to March, there was a decrease. How much decrease? Now that is beautifully done I, by comparing percentage growth. How do we do that? There are three ways of doing that. So let's quickly go through one by one. And because there are three ways, I'm going to add the amount column thrice. So one, two, three. Right now, all of them are same. So right click, show value as, and now I am saying difference from. That's exactly what we are trying to do. Difference of this month versus previous month. Now, the moment you say difference from, it will ask you this dialogue. What is it asking you? What is the base field? Base field is date, but always open a drop down. You know that there is no other base field. Fine. And now base item is important. Currently, we had clicked on Feb, so it is the base item. Fine. But if I click OK, everything will be compared with Feb. If that was the objective, then this is good. But in our case, we want to compare Feb and Jan, May and April. So hard coding Feb as the comparison basis is not what we want right now. So I want to say percent difference from not Feb, not Jan. In fact, there is a nice option there called previous. And now we are actually seeing month on month growth or decline. So Jan to Feb, as you see, 424 increase, then Feb to March, 827 decrease and so on. Now, it's still difficult to visualize, so we need some kind of percentage conversion. So now what are we saying? Percent of. Percent of what? Again, we will say previous, like we did earlier. So now it's saying, if you consider 2185 as 100%, then 424 is 119%. And if you consider this as 100%, this is 68 and so on and so forth. So the basis is 100 and then the difference is converted. But this also becomes confusing. We want the absolute difference. So now we say show values as percent difference from. Basically, these three are similar to each other. It's just different way of displaying the number. So instead of 100 and 119, it just got rid of the 100. So now we can actually say Jan to Feb, there was 19.4% growth. 
and web to march there was 31.7 percent decline this is very useful many people who actually want period by period growth or decline don't know that this is the right way of doing it so let's continue our journey of show values as if you want to clear the entire pivot table for whatever reason the correct way of doing that is pivot table clear all in fact it's a good idea to add this to quick access toolbar which i have done so clear all will just entirely make the pivot table empty and then we can start from scratch so again we are going to put amount and we are going to go product and see more options under show values as so there is something called parent something so let's look at that so i'm going to put masks and we will do percentage of column total this is easy because there is only one layer now if i add one more see what happens there are some things which are bold which are totals so 38% is the contribution of mask across all the business which is this 100% but what is this 7 4 and 25 if you add them up what is it coming to 38 percent so this is the parent this is the child product is the parent card is the child of course i can reverse it now what is happening card is the parent and products are the child so of the entire business 22 percent comes from gold card fine now the problem is this plus this plus this is 22 percent so if i see how much is the contribution of mask in gold it looks like it's seven percent but it's not it is seven percent gold mask for total hundred percent that's confusing so if you actually take all the sum of all the numbers which are not bold what will happen that sum will be 100 you see that 100 percent so bold are added separately non-bold are added separately so if i really want to see under gold i just want to focus on gold what is the contribution of mask versus gloves it is not seven percent and two percent because this total is not coming to 100 it's coming to 22 that's where this comes into picture so you right click show values as and we want to say percentage of parent row total so the parent which is card did not change but now this changed and this does make it 100 so now i can say within gold glows contribute 10 percent and tissue 19.54 so same data better understanding very good now what else notice right now this plus this plus this is 100 and this is not 100 so that gets confusing so now one more option we go to percentage of parent total now what happens by card yes so now this becomes 100 so it's easier to interpret now if you had the same structure in columns you could have used percentage of column in terms of parents parent column total for parent column total to work we would have to add both of them as parent and child here and then you go and use percentage of parent column total and that's how it works all right now let's look at couple of other variations which are remaining in show values as let's start with date and amount this is grouped version so let's ungroup it now what do we have things on a daily basis but i don't want that i want month and year so right click inside the date ungroup no we already ungroup we need to group it now group by what we have different levels of granularity or periods so i want year and month no quarters so now what i want to do is this is amount this is amount this is amount i'm going to add it once more and i want a running total what does that mean this plus this this plus this this plus this usually we put a formula outside not required right click show values as 
running total in. But we have only one field in the row area. If there were multiple, we could have done it for something else. So we want it for date. Date, remember, is month in this case. So now what happens? This plus this, this plus this. Now if you calculate this whole thing, it is 16608, which is the last one. And then it gets reset and starts again for the year. So let's try that again. This is the same thing, show values as running total in, but currently it is for date, which is actually month. Now if I do it for year, let's see what happens. So this is unaffected. The monthly thing is completely unaffected, but this is added to this. So it's only doing it at yearly level. All right. And now another variation of this. Let's try it at monthly level because at yearly level, if you do running total and then it is interrupted by months, it is confusing. So let's say running total in, in percentage terms and at monthly level. So now what happens? It's saying obviously the last month will be 100%. But how did this progress? And if you really want to see this progress properly, a good way of looking at it would be to put a bar chart, conditional formatting, and this will work. So now it is saying, should I repeat it for others? So you say yes. You don't have to manually select and do it. Look at that icon and that helps you a lot. So that's another way. Now the last thing, or rather the second last thing, we will put a mount again, and I want to rank them. So right click, show value as smallest to largest by date, which is month. So notice it looks at which one is the smallest, and that is given one, the highest is given the highest value, and so on. So it's up to you, you want to do it smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Done. Now that leaves us with just one item called index. So let's create a pivot table for that. I'm going to put product and card in row and columns and amount in the value area. And to simplify things, we are going to convert this to percentage of grand total. Okay, so now this tells me to the overall business how much of these is contributing. And I want to see this also color coded. So higher value should have different color, lower value. So that's called conditional formatting. And I'm going to choose a three color scale where green is given to the highest value and red is given to lowest value and yellow is for middle values. So now you can understand it better. So it looks like silver card and sanitizer are contributing overall, agreed. But if you want to see the relative importance of all these guys, there is another way. So what I want is here I want 111, here I want 111, and I want the relative importance of each of these categories. How do we do that? So instead of this, I'm going to say index. It uses a formula, never mind what that formula is. It puts it as decimals. So I'm just going to make it have two decimals, so it's easier for us. Now look at this. What is it saying? Something that percentage thing did not tell us. So it is saying, if you generally increase something in the mask business category, maximum influence will be on platinum. Similarly, in platinum, maximum influence will be on mask and very little or even negative influence on tissues. Similarly, in tissues, maximum influencer is gold card and vice versa. So in silver card, everything is almost like neutral except minor improvement in the context of glows. So without saying, is it by row, is it by column, is it by grand total, everything here is one. So you just compare these guys to each other 
on their own independent merit so anything which is nearer to one is neutral anything which is away from one is not neutral and is higher influence so without going into the mathematics of it this is a very good way to understand the relative importance of anything across rows as well as across column by just looking at the number so that is how show values as can show so many different things while keeping the data same and that brings us to our core concept learn all possible useful things from the data so what's the best practice whenever you have data you make a pivot table try all the show values as at least those which are relevant to business context and you will probably learn something more in order to make that learning even better apply the correct kind of conditional formatting like i am showing you here so that's it thank you